Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Horizon Zero Dawn and its expansion, The Frozen Wilds. So my first exposure to Horizon Zero Dawn was during the Sony press conference at E3 2016, and I was like, wow, that game looks really gorgeous, but I wonder if it plays as well as it looks. So during E3 2016, I had the privilege of playing Horizon Zero Dawn, and I was like, wow, this game really plays as well as it looks, and also, we get to call it Robot Dinosaur Zelda! So at E3 2016, I got to play both Horizon Zero Dawn and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild nearly a year before they came out, and oh boy, did I not expect that they were gonna come head to head. So Horizon Zero Dawn came out really early 2017, but little did we know that Nintendo was releasing Zelda Breath of the Wild and a little console called the Nintendo Switch in the same week. So I only got to play Horizon Zero Dawn for a couple of days before The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild came and pretty much took up all my time. So basically Breath of the Wild was like, get lost. You're playing me now. Okay, okay. okay. And don't get me wrong, Zelda Breath of the Wild is a fantastic game in its own right, but we're not here to talk about that game. We're here to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. So Horizon Zero Dawn is a story about an outcast girl named Aloy who's living in the future about a thousand years from now after the world was destroyed. So humanity regressed to living as tribes and then machines also live across the earth aside from the humans. So when Aloy's a child, she falls down this hole and finds a facility belonging to the old ones, well basically us in present time right now at the recording of this video, so if you're watching this a thousand years in the future, well, you kind of understand. So Aloy finds this device called a focus, which you use throughout the game to, you know, to hear events of what happened to the old ones, well, basically us, and what happened to the world. Like, why did the world get destroyed? Like, why did it end up like Terminator 2? Aloy is raised by her adoptive father, Rost, to become a warrior. So Rost is pretty much like, so Aloy, you are now a grown-up, and you must find your own place within the world. You must go to the Proving and prove yourself. Prove yourself! But just remember, Aloy, machines like the Watchers, like this one, and many other crazy machines are gonna go all over the Earth trying to chase you around and stuff, and you have to learn to defend yourself against them. Machines are bad, but you can use them for your own purposes. So the game plays a lot like the current Legend of Zelda series where you're on this big 3D open world. And man, this world looks gorgeous. Everything looks gorgeous. Even the enemies look gorgeous. Well, I gotta admit, because they are. So Ayla can pick up a lot of plants, tools, wildlife in order to expand her arsenal against the machines. And this game actually does have a lot of stealth mechanics so Aloy can kind of sneak up behind the machines and BOW! Well, I gotta admit, I wasn't exactly very good at the stealth mechanics of this game because I think stealth mechanics work better for games like Metal Gear Solid and Tenchu and Styx, but I didn't really think that the stealth mechanics were well implemented in Horizon Zero Dawn. And many, many times I was just like charging into battles like Aah! and I ended up getting killed. So there were many situations where I pretty pretty much had to force myself to stealth a lot of enemies because, yeah, I wasn't gonna survive against all those, you know, tribesmen and machines all at the same time. And later on in the game, Aloy learns the override and can override machines and like, zzz, all right, let's ride. And Aloy can actually ride these machines like they were horses, which is really, really awesome and definitely saves you a lot of travel. So after the proving, you're attacked by the antagonists of the game called the Eclipse, and then, no, they kill Rost! No, my adoptive father's gone! I still had so much to learn from you even though you kind of cast me out in this world. So Aloy's quest pretty much turns into a quest of self-identity, because why was she an outcast in the first place? And where's Aloy's parents? Does she even have parents? All right guys, so throughout this video, there's gonna be a lot of spoilers for this game, especially if you pick up the game pretty cheap during Christmas or whenever. But so I recommend you kind of watch this video a bit later, but you know, for those of you who have already beaten the game, I'm gonna go on ahead. 
So kind of after helping out the various tribes with various missions and seeing this really luscious golden world and you're finding out a little bit about how this world came to be, you reach the city of Meridian, which looks like the most normal city in the game, although it looks a little more like it belongs in Europe because this game actually does take place in America. You actually go to the ruins of Feral Automated Systems and then you find out Trillionaire, yes, Trillionaire, because, you know, trillions of dollars exist in this game. Trillionaire Ted Farrow, in the past, you know, he's one of the old ones like us, created all of these machines for military purposes, of course, and, you know, to rake in all that extra dough. And the machines were hard to hack, hard to encrypt, because Ted Farrow actually wanted to make them impenetrable so people wouldn't hack into them, you know, other countries couldn't hack into them. So basically he made an impenetrable robot army, which totally wasn't gonna turn on humanity at all. Oh, you know, I've seen this scenario before, you know, but you know what? <laughs> Guess what, kids? Ted Farrow's robots take over the world, destroy the world, and all that shit. You've pretty much heard it all. And that's why the world ended up being the way it is, because Ted Farrow, trillionaire, decided I'm gonna make unhackable robots even my own employees cannot shut off and try to make a lot of money, but then they become self-aware. They can self-replicate and they consume biomass, which means anything including us fellow humans, and the machines take over the world! All right, guys, according to the Horizon Zero Dawn Wiki, Ted Farrow is still pretty young right now. So if you guys know Ted Farrow, I want you to go up to him and say, Ted, there's gonna be a post-apocalyptic event only you can solve. So Ted, the only way you can solve it is you need to become the best McDonald's worker ever. I wonder how that's gonna turn out. So Ted Farrow started off his career working at McDonald's. Then he worked his way up the company and created automatic Farrow robots, creating McFarrow's Industries, which serves a variety of Big Macs and French fries, or what they like to say, the Farrow Burger. And then Ted Farrow was able to replace all the human workers of McFarrow's with robots. But then the robots became self-aware and then started taking over humanity. And the last words people heard was, do you want fries with that? Okay, okay. How about this? Let's tell Ted Farrow, Ted, there's gonna be a post-apocalyptic event that's gonna happen that only you can fix. Like, Ted, you're gonna become the best janitor ever. So Ted Farrow began his career as a local janitor at his high school. And then he worked his way up many janitorial companies founding Pharaoh Janitorial Services, and then he replaced all human janitors with robots. And then those robots became self-aware and decided to take over the Earth. And the last words they said was, we are here to clean up humanity. I guess so, no matter what the outcome is, we're all screwed thanks to Ted Farrow. You know, Ted, there's this movie called Terminator 2. I know you're way too young for Terminator 2, but you know, James Cameron was a genius. Ted, I really, really recommend you watch Terminator 2 and maybe think about what you're gonna do in the future, all right? I mean, yeah, it's great to have trillions of dollars. I mean, who wouldn't want a trillion dollars? But, you know, making robots is not the way, Ted. Why don't you try something else, like make game reviews on YouTube? Okay, I'm not gonna go into detail about that. And of course, Ted Farrow calls on his old colleague, Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck, who is even more of a genius than he is. And Elizabeth Sobeck says, well, the machines are gonna take over in 15 months. And I bet Ted was wondering, well, will that be enough time to watch the next episode of Star Wars coming out or get the PlayStation 29? And Elizabeth was like, uh, no. So Elizabeth comes up with this project called Zero Dawn. Oh, I wonder where I heard that. Where after the Pharaoh robots pretty much destroy the entire world and shut down. So Zero Dawn is gonna brute force all the robots, shut them down, re-terraform life on the planet where robots and humans can live together without YouTube. I wonder what a world without YouTube would be like. And now, of course, you're wondering, hmm, what's the connection between Elizabeth Sobeck and Aloy? Is Aloy Elizabeth Sobeck's reincarnation? Is she Elizabeth Sobeck's long-lost daughter, like super great-grandchild from a thousand years? Or, we don't know. 
And so once you go back to the village where Aloy was born, and you go down into the facility, you find out that Elizabeth Sobek created a program called Gaia, which is part of Zero Dawn, and Gaia was responsible for terraforming the Earth again. And then you realize, so Gaia made a genetic clone of Elizabeth Sobek, known as Aloy! <laughs> Plot twist! Or no, I think we all saw this coming. So that's why the Eclipse wants Aloy dead, because Aloy, aka the genetic clone of Dr. Elizabeth Sobek, is the only one who could shut down all the machines. And of course you meet this guy named Silence, who kind of helps you out within the game, but you find out he was actually responsible for starting the Eclipse cult. You bastard! <laughs> and he reawakened a program called Hades, which was supposed to be the countermeasure to Gaia, just in case the terraforming didn't go the way Gaia wanted. Hades would be there to clean it all up again, causing another permanent extinction to humanity. But, you know, Silence tries to make amends for what he's done by helping Aloy out. And so you actually realize that the Eclipse was actually being manipulated by Hades in order to start another worldwide apocalypse. So at the end of the game, you fight the Eclipse, you fight their leader, you burn him alive, and then you fight a whole bunch of robots. Well, which is basically the old Pharaoh robots reactivated by Hades and the Eclipse. You fight a Deathbringer at the end, which is really, really hard, trust me. And then after that, Hades tries to Escape, and then Aloy destroys Hades, saving the world, but then Silence captures what's left of Hades, and then is like, you know what, you're gonna tell me everything, bitch. You're mine now. <laughs> Thus ending Horizon Zero Dawn, but wait, we have an expansion called The Frozen Wilds, which does actually take place a little shortly before the end of the game, and it's not very clear how you activate the Frozen Wilds. Like, you just have to go to certain markers, and then they'll say, oh, wait, we gotta go to the mountains. So let us go to the mountains. And so you are in the mountains. Yes, I've said mountains many times. And then you find out this evil Damon is taking over the mountain and is gonna launch a volcanic eruption to destroy the mountain. So then you go to the Banuk tribe and have to solve the mystery of what is the Damon. So you actually find Orea. So you find out the Daemon is actually a program called Hephaestus, kind of like Hades, and then the spirit that's actually guiding Orea is called Cyan. But of course, the Banuk is not going to let you go to the main volcano unless you challenge Air Attack to become Chieftain of the Banuk, and then you gotta fight a whole bunch of crazy-ass robots, like Holy shit, look at these robots, man. And this is where I actually found a lot of the items you get in Horizon Zero Dawn, like the trip caster, the rope caster, to be really helpful in keeping these things down. Because these things take a lot of punishment, trust me. So you get to the volcano where you gotta solve all these crazy puzzles, which aren't super hard, but they could stump you a little. I remember it took me a little while to solve these. And then you fight even more crazy robots, holy shit! So basically Horizon Zero Dawn The Frozen Wild is Horizon Zero Dawn, a zillion crazier giant robots in the snow. And lava too. So you finally reach Hephaestus, you're trying to take it over, but you can't because you're like, ah! But then Aurea sacrifices her own life to make sure Aloy can hack into Hephaestus, stopping the threat of the Daemon, and then you save the mountain, which is a tearjerker already in itself, like most of this game, man, so many sacrifices. Aloy bids farewell to Air Attack and the Banuk, and then you can beat the game whenever you like. So after you finish the game, Aloy heads back to Elizabeth Sobek's hometown, the Sobek Ranch, which is probably in Carson City, Nevada. So what happened to Dr. Sobek was a trace of the Pharaoh robots was almost going to discover the bunker for Zero Dawn, and then she had to seal it from the outside, but she could not come back in. So Elizabeth Sobek sacrificed her life to save the rest of humanity, but then the evil bastard Ted Pharaoh, who should have became a McDonald's worker and not a trillionaire, decides to kill off everyone inside the Zero Dawn facility because it's not my fault the world is destroyed. It was the robots. You know, maybe I should have become a McDonald's worker or a YouTube star or a janitor. But no, I decided to become a trillionaire robot master and then I destroyed all humanity. Oh, it's all my fault. And you know, I'm not going to take any responsibility, so fuck you all and I'm going to die in my bunker by myself, bitches. 
And so Aloy goes back to the Sobek ranch, finds the remains of her original, and then she finds out, you know, Gaia asks Sobek, would you have ever had a child? Nah, she was too busy, but I would love for my child to be really awesome like Aloy right now. Which ends Horizon Zero Dawn, and obviously since Silence has Hades in his grasp, we're obviously gonna get a sequel to this game. So yeah guys, Zelda definitely deserved Game of the Year for 2017, no doubt about it. But in all honesty, I found myself more emotionally involved in Horizon Zero Dawn, even though, you know, the gameplay was a little inferior to Zelda because, you know, Aloy can't climb everything, but still it had more of a gripping story, you know, more emotion to it, and, you know, more of an engaging setting, and, like, you want to find out why the world ended up the way it is, so, sorry Zelda. Horizon Zero Dawn wins my personal game for 2017. I mean, not only is the game very gorgeous looking, you know, it has great characters. Aloy is voiced by the legendary Ashley Birch from Hey Ass What You Play In. I mean, even though Zelda was a really, really fantastic game, I do regret not playing a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn and doing this review earlier, but you know, it's better late than never. And Horizon Zero Dawn is an amazing game, an amazing first party IP for Sony, and one of the reasons to get a PlayStation 4, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So you can get Horizon Zero Dawn for from anywhere. You can get it digitally, you can get it from Best Buy, from Target, from Toys R Us, any awesome game store like Amazon Prime, but I definitely recommend getting it at Amazon Prime for much cheaper, or you can wait for a PSN sale where they actually sell it for 20 bucks and it's worth every penny, and I definitely recommend getting the expansion. So that ends this episode of awesome video game memories about Horizon Zero Dawn and its expansion, The Frozen Wilds, and if you have any memories about this game, make sure to leave those in the comments below. Take care. And oh yes, I was chased by this watcher three conventions in a row, and now I have its baby. Get away from me. Aloy, kill it. Hey guys, Ryan here, and I hope you enjoyed that episode of Awesome Video Game Memories. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribe. And make sure to click on that notification bell to make sure you know when we release new episodes, because YouTube pretty much won't tell you. And if you want to see us play this game and many other games live, you can follow us on our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash battlegeekplus. And make sure to subscribe to our channel for some awesome perks. And also make sure to check our schedule to make sure you know which games we're playing. This video is sponsored by Elgato Gaming. For the best in video game capture and streaming, you can purchase your own with the affiliate links down below. Hey, you guys having fun here? Well, help support our efforts at patreon.com slash battlegeekplus.